the Red Bee. We're going to be talking about the first Red Bee, who debuted in Hit Comics number no. 1 back in 1940. Also, his power is more of an attribute, but we'll get to that. He was originally a quality comics creation, but was bought along with all their other assets by DC once their company folded. The first Red Bee was Rick Raleigh, who was a district attorney by day and crime fighter by night, and also sometimes by day. So he fought crime in his red and yellow striped costume with the help of his trained bees and stinger gun. Trained bees. Now this, okay, this could sound terrifying. You're just about to steal a painting, suddenly bees. But if you take a moment to calm down, fight the ears to scream, not the bees, there are lots of ways to get around bees. Just be prepared. Pun not intended, but appreciated. Bug spray, also it was still the golden age, so giant net. There are just more useful powers out there. I mostly want to talk about this because I want to make bad bee jokes. The bees can sense royalty and superheroes apparently. He kind of just faded, but there was a new red bee on the scene for a while, his grandniece Jenna. She had a mech suit and mechanical bees. So better, improving the family rep. However, she eventually gave up her superhero life in the name of research. It's okay. We'll always have the trained bees. And at number nine, we've got Polar Boy. Here's a lesson in how to ruin an actually cool superpower. So, the name Polar Boy implies some sort of usefulness, don't you think? Something to do with ice, maybe? Right? And that's not totally off base from the truth. Polar Boy is capable of cold generation and projection out of his arm. Well, prior to losing his arm, he could do it too. But the whole no arm thing sort of became his niche and then he ran with it for whatever reason. So post Infinite Crisis, Polar Boy shows up in Action Comics number 860 and is in a torture camp because Earth is all anti-alien in the 31st century and Polar Boy got his arm ripped off in the process. But don't worry guys, that's cool because he just recreated an arm out of ice and wields it around like a weapon, like an ice weapon. Yeah. Number eight, made of insects. While there are many super strong and useful heroes that are influenced by insect and insect like abilities, some characters in the Marvelverse take this too far, to the point where it appears to become, uh, less useful. Namely, those heroes and villains who are simply made up of insects. Swarm is one such villain who used to be Fritz von Mayer, a Nazi scientist who, after experimenting on bees, was torn apart by them, but not before they absorbed his consciousness. Yep. So now he's a dude who can be defeated by bug repellent. Like what I did there? Likewise, there is an alternate version of Spider Man called Spider Man, whose only seeming abilities are that he looks like Spider Man, has Peter Parker's consciousness, but is really just a bunch of experimented on spiders in a human shape. Surprisingly, Spider Man at least seems to be able to fight quite well. And he's certainly really creepy. Number seven, color manipulation. So when we're talking about this, we're talking mostly about the color kid, who can change the color of any object at will. Now, cool for your career as an interior decorator extraordinaire, but for your crime fighting career, less so. So this character once used this to mask a MacGuffin so that the villain couldn't find it. But I mean, this is a stopgap measure. He also tripped someone, because he blended an object into the floor. So distraction at best, annoyance at worst. Now you could work this, but you'd have to be one think on your toes color manipulator. So many other careers. Children's entertainer, that would be another good one. Teach the young ones all about mixing colors. Moving on to six, Tar Baby. Keeping on with the weird superheroes here, let's take a look at a mutant whose powers are equally strange as they are gross. In at number six, we have Tar Baby, a member of a community of mutants who lived beneath New York thanks to their extreme nature of their mutations. He actually lived a pretty tragic life, having survived the mutant massacre and returning to live in the underground tunnels after a stint with X Factor. He was eventually killed by the Weapon X program at their Neverland facility in Weapon X Volume 2, Issue 5. So, what can Tar Baby do, aside from potentially having a name that could be correlated with an offensive racial depiction of black people in the past? Well, he has the ability to cover his body with a black adhesive substance that looks a whole lot like tar, hence the name. It seeps through the pores of his skin and objects will permanently stick to him on contact. As you can imagine, that doesn't help much when attempting to live life day to day. Sure, he can scale walls, but he is constantly getting junk stuck to him, hence his raggedy appearance. Just like a walking trash can. Number five. Brother, Power the Geek. He first debuted in Brother, Power the Geek number one back in 1968. So Brother the Geek was meant to be a take on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. He first appeared as an abandoned mannequin in a tailor shop. He was brought to life when he was struck by lightning. He was then captured by the circus who gave him a face. The book was actually this weird mix of both anti and pro hippie propaganda, with Brother the Geek running for Congress and encouraging the hippies to get real jobs. Here's the thing, the staff themselves didn't like this character and they wanted him gone. Although 
what's funny is that some people on staff felt that the hippies in the stories were too sympathetic, and also that the books featured way too much drug use. And some just wondered, why does this character exist? In later appearances, Brother Geek would be retconned to being an imperfect elemental, and he would take part in the Swamp Thing lore. He was then connected to all human simulacra, like dolls and statues, so much more useful and creepy. He can possess dolls now. That's terrifying. Up at number 4 we've got Defensor. Defensor is a character that popped up during the Contest of Champions in the Marvel Universe to take on Iron Man. This Argentinian superhero was once a construction worker who found a shield while on the job, and turns out it was a magic shield. So he decided he would become a superhero. As one does. Aside from enduring a bunch of racially insensitive jokes, Defensor doesn't really do much aside from trying to beat people up with his shield. So much to the point that when he is knocked off by a serial killer, it's just mentioned in passing we never actually get to see it go down in the panels. That's rough. Number 3. The Power of Asbestos Lady Asbestos is Victoria Murdoch, who was originally portrayed as being a brilliant scientist in the comics. Not brilliant enough though, it seems. She was unsurprisingly first introduced in the 1940s as one of the Human Torch's nemeses. She used her wits and the power of asbestos to make an 100% fireproof suit made of, you guessed it, 100% Asbestos. Granted, in the 1940s, we didn't fully understand the long term effects of asbestos. Still, using it to fight the Human Torch seems pretty ridiculous. Marvel later made a point of mentioning in one of their handbooks that Lady Asbestos had died early in her middle age from cancer. Because, you know, asbestos. Number two, Eye Boy. So, Eye Boy is covered in eyes, eyes everywhere. You can see everything from all directions. So, one would assume your brain would also be honed to accommodate this newfound skill. But also, you'd be so vulnerable. All over. So many places for people to poke. I don't even have to come for you. You could just fall over, smooshed. This, however, is a huge surveillance advantage, but you have to make sure your eye person doesn't get rushed into combat, or it could go very poorly very quickly. Now, for Eye Boy, they amped up these powers, gave the poor kid a break, and he can see more than just the average human with all of these eyes. He can see things like magic and people's personalities, so it's like an extra perception on top of just having more eyes. Or tracking. Just a whole host of things. Make up for what would otherwise be just being ten-eyed man but all over your body. And finally, in number one, Zeitgeist. Zeitgeist, aka Alex Clooney, was the leader of the X Statics team when it was initially called X Force, the reality TV version. This version of the team was that celebrity superhero team, who generally fought in glorified publicity stunt battles. Alex wasn't the nicest of fellows. Along with Coach, the team's manager of sorts, he had planned to have the rescue mission of a boy band at an event go sour, with an accident occurring that would kill more than half the team so they could replace the members. Zeitgeist was meant to be one of the only characters who survived the accident, but the scheme went haywire and resulted in his death with his body being split in two and his gut spewing out. Speaking of spewing though, let's talk about his powers. Now that's a segue. Everyone on this iteration of the X-Force team had questionable or comical abilities to an extent. And Axel is no different. His mutation allowed him to spew acidic vomit from his mouth. Yeah. He wore a protective mouthpiece both in and out of his costume in order to prevent himself from getting vomit on his person, which would likely kill him. It was made out of an unknown material that was plastic like in nature, but more resistant. His puke could burn through 10 centimeters of steel in less than 30 seconds, which, yeah, is impressive, but still incredibly nasty. Number 10, Maggots. This superhero is just plain weird and dumb, in the sense that it doesn't really even make sense. Maggot is a mutant, and one of his abilities involves, you guessed it, maggots. Two, to be exact. The maggots are named Eenie and Meenie. And what power do they give this once X Men? Well, they are basically Maggot, aka Japeth's digestive system. He discovered them with Magneto's help after originally thinking he had stomach cancer and was about to die. The maggots have to burrow in and out of his stomach every time they feed, which is depicted as being very painful and harrowing for Japeth. The plus side? He gets nourishment from what they eat, which makes him powerful? Like what? Number nine, Six Pack. Okay, so Six Pack doesn't really have any powers, maybe? He just thinks he does, because, well, he's really drunk all the time. He first appeared in Hitman number 9 back in 1996. Hitman followed the adventures of Tommy Monahan and his contract killing exploits, which somehow found themselves set in the DC universe despite its odd tone as a comic. Six Pack was a member of Section 8. In fact, he formed the team. They go around aiding Tommy Monahan, or do they? 
creating. Six Pack's main power appears to be his extremely high tolerance for alcohol, and while drunk he'll tell anyone and everyone who'll listen about his heroic exploits. However, when he sobers up, he's not sure any of it happened. However, he may also have reality altering powers, but if he does have them, he doesn't remember that when he's sober. So yeah, not the best. His liver will thank him for not living a superhero life, but will the world? Probably, actually. Hitman was an interesting one. Number 8. Precognition Now precognition sounds like a great ability. You can see the future and then you can change it. But no, think about it. Either way, you've been cassandra -ed. So you see the future and you change it. Well that means the future is fluid. So how good was your prediction in the first place? Did you change it? Would it always have changed? Or the other option, the future is inevitable. No matter what you do, you are hurtling towards that timeline. Heck, maybe even you trying to change it sets it on that path. Great, well what good is knowing then? It is more useful if you can change things, but then you have to live in a world of all these shifting potentialities. I guess it would also depend on how strong the ability was. Like, what if you were seeing things you couldn't exactly place, like somebody brushing their teeth, but evilly, but with no other clues. Then someone might try to steal you, and that might set off a Civil War II or a Minority Report. It's a whole thing. More trouble than it's worth. And at 7, Dinosaur. Oh boy, this one is a real gem. This is Dinosaur. Two, two words, <laughs> whose name is a pun in case you needed confirmation on that front. She first appeared in West Coast Avengers issue 46 in 1989 as a member of the team and was born in the Savage Land, we think. That's why she's a terrifying humanoid dinosaur. Here's the thing though, she doesn't speak a lick of English. So we never found out whether or not her origins were extraterrestrial or not, if she was just, you know, merely a mutant. So why does she find herself on this list? Well, despite her horrific appearance, she has the ability of empathetic calming, a power that she would often use on the team's leader Mr. Immortal every time he came back to life. Kind of a paradox, isn't it? Now aside from that, she doesn't appear to age, and she can project waves of sonic force and fly around because she is basically humanoid pterodactyl, so… Up next we've got Tattooed Man. Ok, so we're going a little off the rails here again and looking at a villain. Tattooed Man is a DC villain capable of manipulating his tattoos so that they jump off his body, becoming living creatures that he can kick butt with. Which I mean is kinda cool, but… Pretty limiting. If you're just whipping out the same tricks all the time, don't you think your foes would catch on? Being unpredictable is important for villainy, you guys. Anyway, Tattooed Man is an ex US Marine who just hates superheroes. While in action, he was presumed dead by the US government, but was found by a tribe who taught him the art of sin grafting, which is basically just burning sins into one's own flesh. Masochistic much? Anyway, he can bring those sins or tattoos or whatever to life. So many questions about this one, guys. So, can he just like tattoo or sin graft himself whenever? And what happens if he gets into an accident, his skin is burnt, but then like part of his tattoo is damaged? Like, does it still work? Or when he runs out of space on his body to do more sin grafting? Please guys, fill me in those comments below. At number 5 we've got Dazzler. Dazzler is a Marvel character with the power to convert sound vibrations into light and energy beams. AKA she can throw one hell of a banger. Manipulating light and sound doesn't really get you that far as a superhero though. She once encountered Galactus, who just chose to ignore her. But after pestering him a bit, he temporarily gave her some cosmic energy so she could actually do something interesting in the Marvel Universe. Yet she still manages to get a spot in the X-Men and is asked to audition for the Avengers. Why? Well, that's because she was created as a cross-promotional tie-in with Casablanca Records, and was modeled after KISS. Other abilities include being a really good dancer and a highly accomplished roller skater. Why is that a thing, guys, really? Number 4. Cypher Another mutant making the list, Cypher, aka Douglas Ramsey, has what is probably considered one of the most useless powers in the history of mutants. He can translate any written or spoken languages. All in all, a pretty lame ability. Especially considering he is already a pretty intelligent person and anyone who is smart enough can learn pretty much any language. Not to mention there is also the internet. So, Cypher was introduced in the 1980s however, a time before Google Translate, Rosetta Stone, or Duolingo. And so I kind of get where the writers may have been coming from. In the 80s, this idea was probably pretty fantastic. Not to mention, Cypher can also translate alien languages as well pretty fancy. However, despite all of these considerations, even in the 80s, this mutant's powers were considered a flop. Sorry Cypher. Moving on to number 3, Jin Genie. 
Jin Genie, aka Becca Parker, was one of the members of the X Force's reality TV iteration. More on them later. The superpowered mutant group was made up of a bunch of misfits, including her, with the majority of them having really absurd powers. Jin Genie is no different. As her name suggests, her abilities are tied to alcohol consumption. She can generate powerful seismic vibrations, but here's the kicker those seismic vibrations are proportionate to the amount of alcohol she consumes. If she mixes her alcohol, she can produce dangerous tremors. It also doesn't help that Becca was also. Also an abusive alcoholic who would often aim her seismic waves at her own teammates. Yeah, no bueno. Number two, Rainbow Girl. It's time for more colors. She first debuted in Adventure Comics number 309 back in 1963 and is an alien from the planet Zolnar. Again, she's on the Legion of Substitute Heroes. Her power was wielding an emotion spectrum that resulted in her having intense, rather unpredictable mood swings. So how do her powers work? Well, she's not sure. She can tap into some of the colors, like red for anger, blue for hope, and green for willpower, so the land for an emotion spectrum, but that was introduced long after her creation. It is said that she mostly uses her powers, whatever they are, for fun. Also, guess what? She has pheromones, and she does abuse them, oh yes she does. She used them to create a rainbow aura around herself, giving her an irresistible personality to everyone. Just go on full purple man, but without words. So do you like Rainbow Girl? You don't know, she may do. Also, why is she in the league, even the substitute league? Mm -hmm. And finally, in at number one, Friendly Fire. Friendly Fire had to be number one because his powers are hilarious. He's also a member of Section 8, and his powers are actually quite strong. Energy projection from his hands. He debuted in Hitman number 18 back in 1997. The only problem is he can't hit a target, and definitely not an enemy. In fact, he most often hits his allies, hence his name. It seems like he can only hit his allies. He's the guy you don't want in your team. He was so bad at using his powers, he actually killed himself with them, decapitating or rather disintegrating his own head. So the power is not dumb, but the fact that he used it while being so fundamentally unable to control it, yeah, that earns you a spot at number one. Let's start this list off with some shade. Literally. You know what's super effective? Fighting off your enemies with shadows, and that's just what our good friend the shade does. Yeah, he can control darkness, and he's super fast and practically immortal and doesn't age, but Shadows, guys, come on. Shadows that he manipulates with a magic cane. Yeah. He does get a whole new origin story after Zero Hour that involved 1838 London, England and hanging out with Charles Dickens, but don't worry guys, he's still a psychotic killer with shadow powers. At least he's really good at the whole murdering thing. Number nine, immortality. Now, being immortal doesn't always have the guarantee of coming with eternal youth, or lack of pain or disease, or even not being able to die. People just assume. But what if you're immortal and just becoming a prune? Or you get sick and then you're just sick forever, living as one massive tumor? Or you can still die painfully but then get resurrected again? This one like before needs some kind of backup. Super strength, youth, Lazarus pits, anything. And you still need to contend with the existential dread of losing all those you care about and your connection to humanity. If you feel like you can't keep up with music after like a decade, imagine keeping up with people and trends after a century. Full time job. Could you stay good, or do you think you'd get a little weird if you were immortal? Me? Full Louis de Pointe de Lac, cabin full of books, life goals. Moving on to number 8, Hindsight Lad. Carlton Lefroig is a somewhat sad individual. He would learn that his neighbor Robbie Baldwin was the superhero speedball during an accident where their building was engulfed in Darkling's dark force. Being a misfit himself, Carlton threatened to reveal Robbie's identity unless he let him join the new warriors. Speedball begrudgingly agreed, and Carlton became known as Hindsight Lad. A dude whose costume consisted of a helmet that had two car rear view mirrors attached to its sides. Yeah, despite not having any real powers, he actually turned out to be an asset, being helpful on a management front and with his computer whiz abilities, and design strategies for the team. He would eventually leave the team though, giving up the life of a hero, becoming a self proclaimed Marvelologist, a reclusive paranoid period of his life during Civil War. So, really, no powers, just a knack for research and strategizing, and had a persona that made zero sense. Hindsight? Yeah, not really helpful in matters of life or death, is it? Definitely not something a superhero would want. Number seven, Dazzler's Disco Ball ability. You could call Dazzler the bard of the Marvelverse. Allison Blair, aka Dazzler, is a mutant singer and disco queen who is able to convert sound to light, and sometimes energy. Though the power we will be focusing on in this list is her ability to convert sound into light. While she can also convert sound into energy to create photonic blasts or super focused light 
beams, i.e. lasers. One of her abilities is to just turn any sound into light. Though of course Dazzler prefers music. Making this power useless for fighting, but a pretty one for performing, and turning her into a sort of um, disco ball. Sometimes she uses this ability to try and distract enemies, which granted usually works, but it is also just strange and uh, hilarious. Number 6 Stone Boy Stone Boy is one of those characters who is more credible now than when he first debuted. He first appeared in Adventure Comics number 306 back in 1963. He's a member of the Legion and comes from the planet Zwen. On this planet, the people could petrify their skin, and they used to hibernate for 6 months at a time, something that would also happen while Stone Boy was on Earth. And during that time, he would just be standing there, petrified. So his teammates would sometimes just pick him up and throw him at enemies. <laughs> just because you're hibernating doesn't mean you don't have to pull your weight. There is no hibernate in team. In fact, because of this, he actually didn't make the team proper. He's a substitute on the Legion of Substitute Heroes. Just that name. Can you imagine people seeing you coming and being like, oh look, the Legion of Substitutes. Later, he gained the ability to move in stone form. So he's much more of a threat now, but he's still not used that much. And I hope that they still throw him. That's just amazing. Form of a giant paperweight. Number five, organ rearrangement. Now this is great in battle. Someone's going in for a kill shot. Just relocate your heart or whatever needs to be relocated because you know, they're coming at you. But the question is, how quickly does this happen? Is this organ teleportation or more like the slow progressive slog of it through your body? Can you feel it? That'd be really gross if you could. However, when else do you need this? I mean, aside from pranking purposes, terrify your friends and family. Where is your heart? How are you alive? Surprise, ma, I'm a mutant. The thing for characters who have this ability is it usually isn't brought up until absolutely necessary. So you can get a bit of deus ex organ rearrangement. And at number four, Daredevil feels colors. <laughs> Oh, Daredevil is yet another character on our list that has a great set of powers, but has received a few add-ons over the years that are questionable at best. Daredevil has sometimes been depicted as being able to sense colors by feeling an object. It was something that was featured in his very first issue, where he straight up says this while sewing, I quote, I can even blend the colors, for each colored fabric has a different feel to me. As you can imagine, that little trick faded into obscurity for a while, but somehow found its way back into Murdoch's panels in Daredevil issue 60, where he disguises himself as some dude by duplicating his hair color, something he manages to pull off with some chemicals that he has been randomly carrying around in his pocket. Here he says, I quote, Maybe I can only feel color, not see it, but a few hip pocket chemicals will darken my hair color to match his. Hip pocket chemicals? Ugh. It's just weird. <laughs> and at number three, we've got Ultra Boy. While it's been established that Ultra Boy is actually capable of quite a bit, it would be a little unfair to not look at this hero's origin story and how ridiculous his powers were initially made to be. So, Ultra Boy first arrived on the scene in Superboy number 98 in 1962 and was sent back in time to discover Superboy's secret identity. How does he do that? With his Pentravision. Or is it Penetravision? Penetration vision? Yeah, basically that. At this time, let me bring the cover of this issue to your attention. Super glad they both checked each other out to make sure that they were costume heroes. So did Ultra Boy just go around Smallville using his x-ray vision to check out dudes until he found the S on some guy's chest? I guess. The best part though is how Ultra Boy, aka Jonah, got his powers in the first place. So he was traveling through space, because apparently you don't need to be of age to drive a spaceship, and a strange dragon Loch Ness monster esque creature called an energy beast swallowed him. Luckily for him, the Galactic Patrol showed up, sliced open the creature, and he was free, but not without his body feeling strange. Or so he says. To which Superboy is all like, yo bro, that's funny cause here on earth there's this whole story about a dude named Jonah who was swallowed by a whale. And Ultra Boy is like, haha, yeah, that's really cool, I'm not totally based on that at all. Yeah, good one guys, good one DC. Number 2, Star Fox's Sexy Powers. Oh goodness. The power of pheromones don't actually do that much. I mean, maybe if you were a supervillain, but Star Fox isn't even marketed as such. He's marketed as a superhero with the power to sexually influence anyone he likes, even people he doesn't like. This one is dumb on the level of the writing standpoint, as it leads to a slippery slope that is best left uh, unexplored. Not only this, but the power of persuasion never seems to work against an enemy for him. The strange thing as well with Star Fox is he actually has a bunch of useful powers. Enhanced strength, enhanced healing, he can fly. I mean, he's a titan for goodness sake. But he seems to really only like using his sexy powers, which don't work in a fight. So why do they even exist in the comics? And number one, niceness vibes. Feel the vibe, man. 
This was an ability particularly highlighted by the third Gold Star, who just wanted the universe to be a kind and decent place, which made him the arch enemy of Lobo, and the two would regularly get into dust ups. Gold Star was even drawn to be the opposite of Lobo. He can encourage people to be nice, because he emits niceness vibes, but they most certainly do not work on the main man. Gold Star would routinely get his butt handed to him because the writers did not like him and were just waiting for the day that he would kind of fade into obscurity. Which isn't very nice. See, his vibes don't work at all. And at number 10, Wither. Let's start off our list with a power that's dark as hell. Wither is a mutant who first appeared in New Mutants Volume 2, Issue 3 back in 2003, and has dabbled in both heroics and supervillainy. His power is a unique one that has devastating consequences. It is the power of disintegration. This means everything that he touches decays and disintegrates. It's also involuntary, kind of like Rogue's abilities. Extended contact from Wither could reduce anything or anyone to dust. Luckily, it only affects organic matter. Wither, whose real name is Kevin, believes that his power has a hunger, a desire for him to use it. Yet this has never been confirmed and could merely be psychological. Number 9. Shocker, also known as Herman Schultz. Shocker's power was one that was actually engineered by him, as Schultz is known for being a brilliant engineer. So less super, more self-made, but still fully ridiculous in premise. Shocker's ability is that he vibrates. Yep, Schultz, depending on the version, creates a glove or a suit which allows him to produce intense blasts of vibrated airwaves. His powers actually can be quite useful, allowing him to pack a more powerful punch and vibrate out of his foe's grasp. And at one point, he actually did have vibration as an actual superpower. And the idea behind this one is just hilarious. Up next to number 8, we've got Sportsmaster. So DC recycled the superhero name, so before we jump into this number, let's just clarify that we are talking about the Lawrence Crusher Croc version, even though the the Victor Gover version is very, very similar. But that's a different story. Anyway, Crusher was a crazy talented athlete until he was crippled during a football game. So naturally, he turned to a life of crime, which was sort of a good fit for him since he was actually a total asshole at every single game he played. Really, he was obsessed with winning and would do anything to beat his opponent. Sportsmaster uses his athleticism and sports memorabilia to antagonize heroes. Sometimes he shows up on skis, other times, he would ride around on a Segway with a missile launcher. And when he was feeling particularly menacing, he would fire off baseballs with tennis rackets. Yeah. Pure evil right there. Number 7, Doll Man. Once more, we must head back to the Golden Age, and we're gonna talk about the first Doll Man. There have been three. We're talking about Daryl Dane, who debuted in Feature Comics number 27 back in 1939. And he was labeled the Earth's Mightiest Might and may have been the first shrinking hero. He could shrink down to six inches, so doll size. So you may be wondering, why is he here? Shrinking is good power. However, unlike other shrinkers, he couldn't go in between sizes. No, full size or six inches, nothing else. People were confused by this initially though, because his size varied all the time in the comics, but that was an artist thing and not a story thing. But here's the real kicker. He's also proportionally the same strength as size, so he's as strong as a 6 inch doll man would be. So in short, not very. It's just not the best. I mean, good for infiltrating, but in a conflict, doll man is probably going down. There have been two more doll men since. DC's attempts to relaunch the character after enfolding him to the DC universe upon another Earth yielded middling results. And each one of these also does doesn't have very credible shrinking power. It's okay, Doll Man sounds more like a villain name anyway. Number 6, Omniscience. So omniscience sounds great, you know everything, but it tends to freeze a person in place a bit, enraptured by all the knowledge they have, especially if they have a certain chair. To quote Batman, I am never getting out of this chair. Three Jokers, Joe Chill, sitting next to Green Lantern on a couch construct. Hal having to give Bruce his ring to will himself out of the knowledge chair is still one of the most hilarious things ever. Also, you can kind of plan for everything if you know everything, so it also gets a bit less interesting on that front narratively as well. This is why, with rare exceptions, this tends to be a fleeting ability, and then the hero is left trying to grasp at all the straws of the knowledge they once had. Also, it tends to be shown as pushing the heroes away from their heroic natures. For knowledge is power, and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Number 5. Kangaroo Frank Oliver, aka Kangaroo, not only has a ridiculous power, but is also just a ridiculous character. He is a villain from Australia who studied kangaroos, and eventually developed the superpower of jumping really, really high. You know, 
like a kangaroo, because he's Australian, get it? Yeah. Frank is also just a really unfortunate stereotype. Marvel writers, what are you doing? <laughs> Later, Kangaroo got his power leveled up when he was implanted with air jets, which also gave him super strong legs and even better jumping abilities. But the whole premise of this power is just ridiculous. Number four, color kit. The fact that I know the lower third is not going to have a U in it causes me physical pain. So this is another member from the League of Substitutes. Now color kid has made few appearances and is set up as a happy go lucky classic sidekick type. His power, he can change the color of any object. There you go. Phenomenal cosmic power. He once used his powers to conceal an object and trip some villains. Now there are ways this power could be used, but it's really not all that useful comparatively. For every object you can cloak, you have a telekinetic or a force field user who can do the same thing. Still, you know what Color Kid would be great for? Parties. He has a great party career ahead of him. Superheroing isn't the only life choice out there for people with powers. Think about it. Number three, power rings. Now the power ring is a fantastic weapon, and one that is immensely powerful. I mean, with it, the limits are literally only one's imagination. However, sometimes the constructs can get a little silly. People creating whole trains and cars around themselves and the like. Plus, without the rings, not all the lanterns have backups, not even some extra martial arts training. Simon Baz carried a gun for a bit, but that didn't go over well. Also, a couple of issues into having it, he shot and killed Sinestro. Thankfully, they were already in the realm of the undead, so it didn't have a permanent effect. But still, he would eventually be convinced he didn't need it. Kyle has some crazy constructs, because he's an artist. So the idea is that he would naturally have these really intricate designs because of his artistic nature. Okay, tell me that during a hostage situation under hostile fire. Really cool weapons, not always used to the best of their abilities. Moving on to number two, Long Neck. Long Neck is definitely one of our more obscure characters on this list. He is a mutant who has a slightly longer neck than normal. Seriously, that's it. While that was helpful to Cyclops back when the befuddling character Zorn went on a rampage, Long Neck, aka William Hanover, didn't really do much of anything else. He attended Xavier School for gifted youngsters. When M Day came around, he was depowered. But here is where it gets real tragic, or hilarious depending on your brand of humor. When all of the mutants were depowered, his neck, which extended up to 6 feet in length, snapped when he was trying to revert it back to normal, ultimately killing him. Yeah, moving on. And finally at number 1, we've got Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. Yes, more cheating here guys, with another character that's inclined for more of a nefarious nature than heroic. But I couldn't resist. Meet Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. That's a mouthful. First off, it feels like this supervillain was put together by a toddler. I'm seriously surprised that the word dinosaur isn't a part of his name. Second, let's just take a moment to look at this cover of Doom Patrol 89 from 1964, which was Animal Vegetable Mineral Man's first appearance. I feel like anyone with an appearance like that should just be screaming in pain as opposed to taking on superheroes. Heroes. I can't even imagine the kind of disassociative identity disorder this character must be enduring. Animal Vegetable Mineral Man, as you may have guessed, has the ability to change his body into any form of animal, vegetable, or mineral, even if they don't exist anymore, like dinosaurs, but hey, whatever, they're animals, right? How did he get these powers? He fell into a vat of amino acids. Well, a vat of amino acids that had an electrical current running through it, but still that Makes no sense whatsoever, but anyway. Did anyone tell this guy that instead of fighting the Doom Patrol, he should just use his mineral ability to like poop out diamonds or something? Or gold? Seriously, missed opportunities over here. Number 10, Empathy. Empathic powers tend to flounder when they are on their own. Hence, in the superhero world, you will often find them paired with other abilities. For example, while empathy may be a large part of Raven's abilities, it is not the only part. She can also influence emotion, and also her soul self, and a whole host of demonic abilities. All of this is cause if you just have empathic abilities, you run into the Deanna Troy situation. I'm sensing hostility, Captain. Now, knowing someone's emotional state would be an asset, but without even telepathy to back it up, you'd still be kind of guessing, like, are they mad because of what happened in your battle or negotiation, or because the store ran out of hazelnut milk? You don't know. Also, you can't just yell it out. Hold up, Titans, he's sad. It's a very I know something you don't know maybe kind of power. 
However, as soon as you partner it up with something else, it goes up a whole other level. Moving on to number nine, Magneto's magnetic attraction. While Magneto's powers are no laughing matter, over the years he's been imbued with a few extra skill sets pertaining to his magnetism that have left a few readers rolling their eyes. Magneto is one of the best baddies ever written, a villain with a point, who can not only conduct extreme amounts of chaos like rising up a whole stadium into the air, but can also mess with the iron in your blood to knock you out. Or even, if you're Wolverine, rip your skeleton out of your body. It's brutal stuff. So why on earth would someone think, hey we should give Magneto a new trick? It's beyond us. That seems to be the case in volume 1 of X-Men issue 18 where he literally says this, I quote, gaze into my eyes, now you cannot turn away, you are held by magnetic attraction. And no my friends, this isn't a cute play on words as far as our pal Eric is concerned. He once tried it on Blob and discovered the mutant had a mental block. As you can imagine, that ability faded into obscurity pretty darn quick. Number 8. Arm Fall Off Boy it wouldn't be one of these lists without Armfall Off Boy. He debuted in Secret Origins Volume 2, number 46, back in 1989. Yeah, he's a lot more recent than most people think. So he can detach his own limbs, but usually does it with his arms, because, well, that's the most convenient. Very few situations where you can detach a leg and wield it properly without falling over. Although if you could, you'd have a much stronger weapon. So he can beat people with his arms or teach them the importance of leaving a note. Little Arrested Development reference for y'all. So Armful Off Boy's real name is Floyd Belkin, and well, he can beat people with his arms as if they're clubs. And apparently he got his powers by accident, while holding an anti-gravity metal element 152. However, it's Matter Eater Lad who said that, so take it with a grain of salt. In his first appearance, Armful Off Boy was rejected from the Legion of Superheroes. This was during their tryouts, and it was for having powers that were not useful enough. He then tried again, but when he made it to the final five, he literally fell to pieces, just limbs everywhere. So yeah, arm fall off boy, he sure exists. Up next at number 7 we've got Chlorophyll Kid. Guys, I'm developing a real soft spot for Chlorophyll Kid. We featured him on one of our other lists and he's seriously growing on me. No pun intended. So Chlorophyll Kid's powers consist of being able to grow plants real good, which if you think about it, could be really good for, you know, ending world hunger. But fighting crime? Meh. He can grow seeds into full blown plants within seconds, he's also got an arsenal of seeds that he can just whip out whenever, and he's pretty much a walking talking plant encyclopedia. He was rejected from the Legion of Superheroes, but that didn't stop him from achieving his dreams. Instead he gathers up some other failed applicants and they form the Legion of Substitute Superheroes. Aww. Number 6. Fireworks. Yeah, okay, so we're looking at you, Jubilee. Real talk, I actually love Jubilee and had a crush on the 90s animated series version of her, but still. Fireworks? Really? While her powers are probably terrifying if you are epileptic, they are just otherwise mostly annoying if you are a villain. They're a really great party trick if you're a friend. I mean, imagine having fireworks at all your parties. That's a reality if you are friends with Jubilee. If you actually need to fight some sentinels though, this power is unfortunately not as useful. Also, Jubilee's firework power often just leads to her accidentally blowing things up. What's so wrong with being a mutant anyway? In at 5, Gold Balls. Gold Balls is so weird you guys. He is a hero whose body spews gold balls. Not made of actual gold, but of an unknown substance which is kind of gross. And his body can absorb said balls. Gold Balls debuted in Uncanny X-Men Volume 3 Issue 1 in 2013. He first attempted a robbery in San Diego after he discovered his powers and the police tried to arrest him for it until Cyclops and the X-Men intervened. Gold Balls is a mutant whose real name is Fabio Mendina and he can project gold colored balls of varying sizes at high speeds from any part of his body. Think about that for a sec. He can summon an infinite number of them, and if he concentrates enough, he can project them into a specific area rather than just spew them out randomly. And he generally reabsorbs them, although if he is calm and focused enough, he can make them disappear altogether. So where do they go? What are they made of? Are they part of his body? There are so many questions. But at least compared to some of the other heroes on our list, Gold Balls' balls, oh god, are at least useful. Sometimes. Number 4. Charisma. But charisma is not a power you say. Some people are just charming. But in the comic book world, some people are more than charming. They may have magnetic personalities or other abilities that make them appealing to others, sometimes pheromones. The thing with this ability is it puts you in a position where you have to question their interactions, like do these people like them because they're nice? Or is it because there's some sort of influence going on? It veers pretty far into the realm of manipulation if used that way, and far away from heroic territory. And then you end up with Star Fox. Never go full Star Fox, because essentially then you've just gone Purple Man. 
Just let people have baseline charisma, that's fine. Average charm can feel like a superpower anyway. Number three, animal vegetable mineral man. Half man, half vegetable, half mineral. So this character isn't a hero. No, we have our first villain joining the list. He first debuted in Doom Patrol Volume 1, number 89, back in 1964. He's very metamorpho in terms of appearance. So he is Dr. Sven Larsen, who gained his powers after falling into a vat of amino acids. It was the 60s. We all know that falling into essentially a vitamin vat would not give you powers, sadly. So his powers are that he can change any part of his body into an animal, vegetable, or mineral. He can also combine them all at once into some horrible Franken compound. In classic appearances, usually only one side of his body would change and the other part would be kept normal, like one half of his face, so that he could be identified and had a base model for artists to be able to draw. He was briefly brought back in the New 52, but I think the world is safe from Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. Now that I've said that, watch him get his own miniseries, his own TV show. Up next at number two, we've got Rainbow Girl, a superhero whose powers stem from their inability to control their emotions. Yay! Oh, but she has to be a woman. Fun, right, yeah. So here we've got Rainbow Girl, whose abilities have been described as wielding the power of the mysterious emotional spectrum, resulting in unpredictable mood swings. Oh, the sexism is blatant with this one, friends. So Rainbow Girl is actually a woman named Dory who wanted to be an actress, but also wanted to join the Legion of Superheroes. She gets rejected from the Legion and ends up marrying some super rich and super old dude in Metropolis so she can remain on Earth. So just, you know. Checking off every single one of those stereotypes. Real fun. Number one, Doorman. Dumb in the most conventional of senses, Doorman is actually a member of the Great Lakes Avengers. If you are unfamiliar with this crew of heroes, I highly recommend looking them up, as many of their members are pretty ridiculous in and of themselves, and pretty adorable. In fact, Dinosaur from Kelly's Part 1 of this list was also a member, as was the comical, though much more useful, Deadpool. Doorman's power might be one of the silliest. Using dark force energy, he can allow anyone to pass through him and also pass through solid objects, making his ability useful for becoming a doorway. That's right. One of his powers is he simply can allow you to teleport from one room to the next by passing through him. Who needs a door when you have Doorman? 